I just love their personalities. They're, they're just, there's always something going on. It's, you know, all the breeds, when they play with each other, they play different th from when they play with another breed. And it's like, oh, look, at, we're all here. They really love being with each other. And they play with each other just slightly different than they play with any other dog. Yeah, we're, we're going to start something called Yorkies Anonymous. I love Australian Terriers. I love talking about them. People say, how do you stand the barking? That would drive me nuts. Well, it does me too. But I just love the outgoing personalities of my Terriers. They greeted me last night after I got home after being gone four days. It's quite their reunion. When I come home from work, he's already at the door. And, and Bailey was the exact same way. They love people, but they still have that little independent piece wired. Um, can shift from being the perfect lap dog to 30 seconds later, the killer. If a rabbit gets through their fence, which happens on occasion, there will be a rabbit in five pieces. And because they are very versatile. They're very versatile little dogs. You know, being a terrier, they're kind of, um, you know, ADD. So, you know, you see squirrel in, you know, the neighbor's yard across the street, he's going to go for it. A small terrier like that, I think it's a really nice, nice breed of dog. Recommend them for anybody that think they want a little bit of liveliness in their home. <laughs> you know, I appreciate their differences and embrace them. And, I love them all. Throughout the show you will see clips of my own three pups. All rescue dogs. And as we visit around, you will see footage of each party's own dogs as we explore the personalities of these three closely related terriers. Yorkies were developed from various British Isle Terriers that existed in the 1800s and became established as their own breed around 1860. Their body is square proportioned with a comparatively shorter muzzle and rounder head appearance. Hair on this breed grows fast, thick, and long everywhere, including the ears and face. But like all three breeds featured, they are hypoallergenic and non-shedding. The AKC standard calls for a dog not to exceed 7 pounds in weight. Thus, they are typically the smallest of the three breeds. Let's visit Trudy Delich, who raises and trains Yorkies, as well as party Yorkies and viewers, for placing as loving pets. Well, my name is Trudy Delich, and I love Yorkies. I've been raising them for about 25 years. Oh, obsessed, some people would say. So the Buers originated in Germany, and at that time they were Yorkshire Terrier a la pom -poms. That's what they were first known as. So Dr. Buer had imported two dogs from Stream Glen Kennel in England, and he was the first one to have this tricolor come up in one of his litters. He bred together two traditionally colored show Yorkies. Now, surprise, we end up with, where did this come from? Well, it's because two of them were carrying this tricolor gene. So what is he going to do with this beautiful dog? He decided, well, I'm going to show him in the shows here in Germany as a Yorkie, because it's a Yorkie. The parents were Yorkies. That didn't fly because the color wasn't right. So then he started his own breed altogether called Buer. They ended up in the United States probably around the year 2000. Um, they started just barely showing up here, 2000, 2003. 
it's not fair to talk about viewers and their history without acknowledging the fact that the same thing was going on in the United States simultaneously with what is now known as the party Yorkshire Terrier. So through the 80s and 90s, there's a big battle that went on at the American Kennel Club with the tricolored party Yorkies saying, oh no, they're not Yorkies, something else was bred in, that's why they carry this white gene. Here this show name was showing up with a color that was a variant. And they said, these are beautiful dogs, why are we hiding them? They're Yorkies, but they carry a recessive trait. So Nico, at great expense to themselves, shut down their kennel, their breed, a huge breeding show kennel for, for a whole year and did not breed any dogs and DNA'd 160 some dogs roughly going right back to their import stream gland verifying there was nothing else in that breed except pure AKC Yorkies that this color is a variant it's a recessive variant that's been carried all the way along they are wildly popular just um, rumor has it that more party Yorkies were registered last year with AKC than traditional. You're being just a super pest. Yorkies are known for being very loyal and they make great companions. Mary Teske is a longtime Yorkie owner. And little Molly is a very popular pup in their own neighborhood. There's many people around here she knows, and most everybody around here has bought treats. Anybody who gives her treats, well, they're really in her good graces. <laughs> if we have bacon for breakfast, <laughs> they bring her bacon. They get extra bacon and bring it to her. <laughs> yeah, don't they? You like bacon. She likes everybody. Well, the administrator here, she uh, just loves her. <laughs> Yesterday, Tracy said, give me arm and take her for a walk. So I gave her leash to Tracy, and I don't know where she went. And I came back after supper to get her, and she wasn't there. She was in Tracy's office. <laughs> She's not spoiled. Hey, of course not. Yes, my daughter has a male Yorkie. Well, um... Dickens is, a, is young and very playful, and of course Molly doesn't. She's more of the relaxed type, <laughs> as you can see. And she'll be sleep, sound asleep, and I come in and if I don't even say a word, she pops out of that bed just like... <laughs> other people go by and doesn't bother her in the least. But she likes her mommy. <laughs> and that was Molly when she was just a puppy. Molly's only problem all her life has been her teeth. And when I got her, I tried brushing them. But they were just like needles. So that didn't last too long. I put her bed right alongside of my bed. She snores. <laughs> she doesn't tell me if I do, but she, I know she does. And uh, she doesn't like her bed if there's not a blanket in it. She goes in there and she stirs the bed, the blanket all around, curls up, puts her nose in the blanket. They're lovable. And, and she, well, this one, she'll do, lay on her back and let me put her boots on. And uh, it's kind of funny, everybody laughs at me. Good old Velcro. And that's her thunder shirt. If it's storming, she gets this shaking, panting, horrible thing. <laughs> then I take her to bed and hold her real close. And even if there's nothing going on here, she knows there's a storm in the area. She's got a raincoat. She won't wear the hood, though. But she's a real good traveler. Good in motels and everything. She likes to be in the car. But I guess maybe I'm always with her. <laughs> Don't let their size fool you. This breed is very active and they do need to have an outlet for their terrier tendencies. Judy Kasseberg 
is a member of the Yorkshire Terrier Club of America, an advocate for the breed. We talked Yorkie during weekly agility training. I went over and got the phone directory and opened up dog schools. And so we went up to Arrowhead and my dog tried to crawl into the agility fence, which I had no idea. I finally said to our instructor, what are they doing out there and how do you get in there to do it? And she's, well, it's called dog agility. Started doing agility and she just loved it. She just loved it. Hey, that's that doggy in the mirror doesn't have in there. I'm convinced the dogs really understand what they need to do, it's people don't. I just wish I had started this 30 years before I did, because it's fun, and the dogs like it, and your relationship with your dog changes. It's a partnership. What are you going to do? Winnie's favorite is the teeter. Let's pull the teeter up. Like children, each dog is different. And so you're, you, you know, you're constantly changing the way you're training or what you're doing. Now, our first Yorkie was a rescue, and, and we rescued her next to the highway. She was hanging out at the convenience store in the highway. And our daughter brought her home, and she was just a very sweet dog. So we decided we, we really liked the breed. Our Lily, she had put Lily out with a family and they called her up and said, you have to come get this dog, she's too active, we can't have her here. So we, that's how we got Lily, who is, she loves agility. Good night. Good job, Lily. Come on, Where are you? There you are. <laughs> I don't like that they're fashion accessories at all. We aren't a toy. We're not, you know, something to dress up, although my dogs do have clothes. I fought really hard for our dogs to be accepted into Earth Dog. And my Emma is the second Yorkie in the country to have gotten her certificate of gameness from the American Working Terrier Association. Terrier hunting is really fun. When you, you see your dog do what it was bred to do, it's, it's just like the whole world opens up for you. I read someplace that Yorkies were bred in England to hunt the rats. Seems to me the rats would be the same size. I have little Flower, who is um, not quite five pounds. She's very prissy looking with bows and the whole nine yards. And one day she um, had lined up her chipmunk kills for the day in a row. Pretty startling to see a fancy little dog, ribbons and bows, doing what they're doing. Our retrievers retrieve. You know, it's, it's a really good feeling. Well, it's the same thing when your dog takes out a rat. <laughs> they were bred to be ratters in weeding mills and in the mines. You won't find a breed that is more interactive with people. They love to tease and play games with their owners, and they express a full range of moods. When somebody gets a Yorkie, they have a very hard time switching to another breed. They can switch from another breed and maybe even reluctantly say, well, okay, we'll have a Yorkie this time because maybe the wife wants the Yorkie. What happens is the Yorkie becomes so clever. <laughs> he becomes the dog of the dad, and now the wife still doesn't have a dog, so they come back for a second one. <laughs> they know who to latch on to, <laughs> to win affection. <laughs> Yorkies are manipulative enough so that they will control their people. They bark at me when I'm on the phone is a, a common complaint. So, well, what do you do? Well, I give them a toy to keep them quiet. <laughs> I said, okay, they have now trained you to give them a toy <laughs> for barking. <laughs> you know? We have to go over the whole principle that it's okay to say no. It's okay. And how do you say no? You know, stop it or some. I usually go, uh oh, or ah uh ah. -uh. Not no, like my husband, no dogs. <laughs> so that's not gonna, that's not gonna cut it, dear. <laughs> if you don't like a dog that's gonna give you the claw every so often, you don't want a terrier. You know, a Yorkie is, huh? 
You want me to do what? When I'm ready. You know, I can handle that. I've heard stories of where people leave on a trip and then they say their girl won't talk to them or have anything to do with them for a week, you know, which means a spoiled Yorkie. <laughs> but <laughs> the, the, our little one, oh my God, I, I tell people if I found her on top of the refrigerator, I wouldn't be surprised. She is everywhere, everywhere. And Josie can jump this high, straight up and down. <laughs> Lily would never do that, but she's sneaky. She, she will sit and somebody's got something. Then as soon as they've turned their back, she got it. And she's the only dog I've ever had that buries bones. And she'll call back six, seven months later and bring them in. You know, they can be cuddly, they can be sweet, they can, if, if you're not feeling good, they're there all the time, they can be jealous. If one gets to go somewhere and the others don't, they will let you have it. You know, I wonder if in, in the terrier world that the value of something is that somebody else wants it. In the bed, they each have their place in bed. And if somebody decides to take somebody else's place, it's very nasty. Yeah, isn't it fun? That's a genetic characteristic. I do have one that smiles, and she smiles, and her mother smiles, and her sister smiles. And so that is something that comes down genetically. It's a characteristic of the breed. We had one that just like that to that. I had someone say one time, your dog is snarling at me, and I'm going, no, she's smiling. The smile is actually an appeasement. It's it's acknowledging you as, oh, the pack leader's home. They're, they're expressive dogs. They know the routine during the week. They know which day is which. And then before they go to bed, they get a little bit of extra dinner, because Winnie gets an upset tummy. If she doesn't have to go to bed with a little food in her tummy. Aren't they wonderful? I mean, I think it's just, it's amazingly comforting to have a dog. The Silky Terrier is essentially a cross between Australian Terriers and Yorkshire Terriers, first developed in the early 1900s. They are single coated with hair that is silky in texture that should not reach floor length while hair on the face and ears remains short. Considering the length of coat, they are very easy to groom. The head is wedge-shaped with almond-shaped eyes, and their size is generally between that of a Yorkie or Aussie at around 9 to 10 inch shoulder height, with a rectangular body shape one-fifth longer than they are tall. Leon Padruck is former president of the Silky Terrier Club of America, is currently on the board, and raises Silky for both show and placement in loving pet homes. Okay, what's it like to have six silkies in the house? Who's in, who's out, who's with me, who's had, who gets to go for a walk? Six dogs, you can't walk them all. I know, it's hard to be one of so many. My name is Leanne Podrick. I've had silky terriers for over 25 years. I love the breed, it's a unique breed. Sweet with people. So the Australian terrier is a bigger terrier with a harsher coat. Yorkies are smaller with a very fine coat. And so they started breeding them together. They also think silkies have a little bit of sky terrier in them. Um, but no matter, they started breeding this in-between breed. And the breed characteristics are a combination of both the Yorkshire Terrier and the Australian Terrier. So when we're talking about them, sometimes we'll say, well, this one looks a little more Aussie, or this one looks a little more Yorkie. And that's not because they really look like a Yorkie or look like an Aussie, but there's those nuances that we're trying to make sure the dog is true to type for a Silky Terrier, not an Australian Terrier or a Yorkshire Terrier. So unlike the Yorkie that would be square, you can see she has a little bit more of a rectangular body, which is what they're supposed to have. You can see with his face, he's clean pointed because his hair, you know, just comes down a little bit. Yorkies have a lot of hair on their ears. 
If silkies have that, they're considered to be overcoated, and Yorkies do have a thicker coat. Silkies are um, a thin coated dog. Um, it should be a single strands of hair. They shake it out, and then the part kind of falls back into place. Yes, they do have eyelashes that are long. Some of them have longer ones than others, but they do have um, eyelashes that make them kind of look exotic when you look close. You really want to have a dark pigment around the eye, so when you look at their eye rim, they should have a black rim, almost like you took um, eyeliner and outlined the eyes. You might think that they're models for the show ring, but ask any Silky Terrier, their favorite sport is hunting. People will say, I'm interested in a silky because I don't really want that small of a dog. And then I'll tell them the differences between, well, if you get a Yorkie, their personality would be like this. If you get a silky, it's going to be more terrier like. So they understand, um, you know, those nuances. It's not just the size. Sometimes men will say, oh, I don't want a little dog. And every time we've placed a silky in a home, the man always says, oh my gosh, you walk this dog around the neighborhood and he's the, he's the boss of the neighborhood. They have that hunting, they're always looking. That prey drive is very important and I think that's why they'll never be or should be a super popular pet breed because you have to have the right home that respects that. They'll bolt out the door, you know, you open the door, they'll bolt. Silkies are not bred to be pack animals. They were never raised and bred to see who would hunt well together. So I always tell my veterinary office when they say, oh my gosh, your dogs, I always say, look, if I wanted a pack of beagles, I'd get a pack of beagles. They're very independent. Um, when they chase that rodent or that snake, it's their rodent, their snake, and they don't want to share. And so they're kind of like that in your house too. It's their chew toy, I'm not sharing, it's my toy, uh, I'm gonna take it away from you. Silkies have a million thoughts going on, and there's nothing funnier than watching Silkies in Obedience are always checking everything out. So they're paying attention to you, but hey, wait, there's a hundred other things I could be checking out. So if you catch them at the right moment on the right day, they know what to do. It's just a matter of, but do I feel like doing it today? They're not 24-7 um, in your face. They're very quiet and calm in the house, but as soon as something happens, they're up looking at it because it's that they look for differences. They're always looking for something that's different, something new and exciting. They're very, very affectionate dogs. They follow you around. They want to be with you. Um, they love to snuggle. Very, very loving. Very loving. In fact, the problem is with having the number we have, um, they also get a little testy if there's too many near them on the lap. You know, they'll look at the other dog coming into one of those, like, it's my lap. That's the joy they can bring if they're placed in the right home where people appreciate those unique characteristics that they have. Because of their intense nature, silkies do end up at rescue, and adoption is a great option for those who fit their lifestyles. Yeah, they're, they are a, a part of our family. It's kind of, they're kind of the center of our universe. <laughs> Jean Linnell is a foster for secondhand hounds and has adopted her three pups from rescue, including Milo, the Silky Terrier. So I found this happy little face with rabbit ears, tallest ears I've ever seen on a dog. His picture came up because I was, I was looking for Karen Terriers, believe it or not, that's what they had him under was a Karen Terrier. I contacted the rescue, it was down in Spencer, Iowa, almost four hours from here. I sent the adoption fee sight unseen. I didn't want them going anywhere. I didn't want anyone stealing them out from under me. And my mother drove down with me to Spencer, Iowa to pick him up. And the director opened the door and greeted us and said, come on in. I want you to meet him, and I walked in the door, and Milo ran. He was barreling down this long corridor hallway and literally jumped into my arms. He'd never met me before. And my mom looked at me and said, obviously, this is meant to be. And so we, uh, we finalized the adoption right then and there, and he came home. 
So my mom drove the trip home so that we could bond. <laughs> learn more about fostering, I thought, hey, I could do this. Um, this might be kind of fun. And come to find out that um, it's even more rewarding than the time you put into it. And it's just a wonderful, wonderful way to help all of those, those lost little souls find their way again. I'm gonna get emotional. <laughs> it's just been really great to see these little souls blossom with love and compassion and the proper medical care. People say, I could never do that because I could never give the dogs up. But you only have to do it once and see how wonderful and it is and know, understand that feeling when they go to the right home that you just want to do it over and over. It's 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 kind of it's kind of addictive almost. Here. Here. Milo's just a happy guy. He's by far the easiest of the personalities and the most you know easygoing. He loves to go fishing. He loves to be on the boat. Gets really excited around bobbers because he knows there's fish at the other end. Oh. <laughs> His hunting instinct is very strong. It's scary that he is as good as he is because he can catch him on the run. I came out one evening, it was dark, and I couldn't get him, I couldn't call him in, he would not come in. But I could see through what little ambient light there was out here that he was out here in the backyard with something. And he had caught a bunny in the yard and he was, oh, Whoa. Gross me out. I'm sorry. It was disgusting. But he had gutted that bunny. It was it was bad. Terriers aren't for everybody. <laughs> silkies are from Australia. And so if you wanted to see the most silkies, you'd go to Australia to see them. But there's pockets in the United States where they're popular. Uh, very big in California, uh, Washington State, Oregon. That part of the country. They were first brought over to the United States in the early 1950s. Wexford Pogo was one of the first silkies. Peggy Smith, actually, her husband was an airline captain and brought the silkies over. My second specialty I went to, I had a puppy that I had bred and he took Winner's Dog under Peggy Smith as the judge. I was very um, honored that she would appreciate my dog because of her background with the breed. It was a real honor to win under her. By their breed standard, silkies can be a lot of color, but sometimes they can get a gold tone to them, and that comes back from our cousin Red, Australian Terrier. So we still have that color in our background, and sometimes we'll have a silky that has more of the, of the gold color in them. Silky Terriers are supposed to have ears that stand up. And once in a while, you'll have a line where the ear leather isn't as strong. And you'll just know that in their background, genetically, their parents are carrying that trait for it's called a drop ear. It's not a health problem. They can still hear as well. They're born black and tan, and they actually look like Rottweiler puppies because their ears are down, and, um, and they're just very snub-nosed and black and tan. You'd never know it's a Silky Terrier but they should still know that hunting, looking for something, um, which is why they lift that little foot up. Sometimes there's breed traits that get passed on, like the lifting the foot. That can be something that one line of silkies will do more than maybe another line of silkies. So what type of home works best for these puppy Houdinis? We got Milo, we brought him home and he literally ran through the fence because he is so skinny. You know, he's, he, there's no bulk to him, and there's not an ounce of fat on him. He is a lean, lean machine, and he literally ran through it. So then we had to reinforce everything. Well, we opened the door, and there was a chipmunk running. As soon as he saw the chipmunk, he was gone after the chipmunk, and he didn't care if he loved, loved, loved me or not. He was after the chipmunk. So one of the things that I look for when I place a silky is, do you have a fenced-in yard, or do you understand the dog needs to be on a leash? 
they, they can be climbers and jumpers. And so one of the things, if somebody would come to my house and say, could you keep my silky for a couple days? The first question I'd ask is, is it a climber or a jumper? I had one that could get out of anything. He could figure out a way to go to the corner of the chain link fence and climb up it so we could get out. I'm very careful about placing them because while they're wonderful pets, they still have that breed characteristic, they're a terrier, and part of the standard um, talks about their toyishness is not what we want. We don't want it to be a little cute toy. Yeah, they're definitely not what I would consider a lap dog. He likes to run, and so he will run and run and run and run if it's out in the, out in the yard here. It's, you know, guarding the perimeter or in the house, checking the windows. They're a terrier, and that means they're on their toes, taking charge. The Australian Terrier also shares a similar ancestry, as their makeup is that of British Terriers of the 1800s, culminating into the Rough Terrier, and further refined into the Australian Terrier during that country's pioneering age. They are a sturdy working terrier, medium boned, 10 to 11 inches in height, and generally around 12 to 14 pounds. They have a longer muzzle with powerful jaws and a proportionally long body. They have a double coat that is shorter in length between a distinctive ruff and apron. The Gaffan family has raised the number one and number two Australian terriers in the country. Let's travel to Dunham Lake to hear their experiences with this rough and tumble terrier. I'd say that the Aussie, a good description is they're, they're, they're self-confident, they're alert, they're highly trainable, they're very loyal, they can be stubborn. If they want something, they, they stay on it until they accomplish their task. Very family-oriented. We were living in the city and Ellie, my daughter Ellie, my co-breeder, uh, decided that she would like to show a dog. And so we started our research. We knew we were moving to the country and we had never seen an Australian Terrier. Went on an exploration to find one and it was not easy to find one. Yeah, they're really fun. They all have their own personalities and it's fun to watch all of them. They're native to Australia. First, they were called a rough-coated terrier. They were one of the first breeds to be a house pet. They would be brought in the house and they were put on the children's beds to keep their feet warm at night. They really are a sturdy dog. They're not a, a foo-foo dog. It's, they protected the family from snakes. Their hearing is exceptional and they will and wait patiently, even if it's all day, and then they'll grab it and just shake it and it's, it's done. And they're very proud of their, of their accomplishment for the day. I would say like a family with kids and you know, they are very active, so they need something to do and I think kids are, they really need to be it with a family. If you're a family or someone that is, you know, works 10 hour days and can't come home to watch them or take care of them, that would not be a good fit for an Australian Terrier. They really love being with their people. On a nice day, they'd much rather be outside and with you. If, if you're outside, they want to be outside with you. They like to be with you, near you. Some really like to be on our lap and sleep in our beds. But for the most part, they like to be next to you, touching you somewhere, on your, by your feet, as I've got three down here by our feet or up here on the couch. I don't. What do you see here? Where do you want to go? In the pile? There's not much room there. There's no room. <laughs> As with the Silky, these terriers are lesser known and often misidentified. The breed still isn't very well recognized. A lot of people will see them and ask if it's a, a Yorkie or what kind of breed, what kind of mixed breed it is. Not in the whole almost 16 years that I had Bailey did I ever meet another person that even knew what he was. Like we would go for walks. 
When we come up to somebody, most everybody accused me of having an overgrown Yorkie. They're, they're called rough coated because they've got, as I said, they've got texture and it, it should be coarse. Yeah, there's three varieties. There's a blue tan and there's a red and then there's sandy. And sandy is very rare. The standard is 10 to 11 inches in height and one to one and a half inches longer from their height. So if you're speaking about the muzzle, the length of the muzzle, so from the nose to the stop in between the eyes, should be the equal distance between the stop and the top of the skull. It's called nose leather and the, the, the deeper, the wider, the longer, the better. The under jaw is um, I think more of an identifier of strength of bite. His tail is, according to the AKC, is supposed to be docked. When I found Teresa, um, she told me that he was not going to be docked. I almost didn't get him. We've decided as a family and as joint breeders, my daughters and I, that um, we are no longer docking. And that's a, a real passion of mine. I've done a lot of research over the last couple of years regarding that. Dogs in Europe expand. Australia, where the breed was originated and our standard was formed, no longer dock. To me, I was thinking that is going to be the weirdest looking dog I've ever seen. I went to visit him at six weeks old and I saw that little tail and it's so expressive and so happy. Well, Australian Terriers are so happy. It's just one of his ways of expressing his happiness. The Aussie's unique qualities endear themselves to their loyalists who go to no ends to show their love for these unique pooches. Well, a couple years ago I wrote this book with the help of my daughters and it also came at, the, at a time when I had a family that was on my waiting list and they wanted a puppy and um, I didn't have a puppy at that time but we knew that the boy would be getting a puppy from me in, in a few months to come but Christmas was around the corner and that's when they wanted to, to present him with the gift and so I made, I, I finished my book. It inspired me to complete it. It was just, it was just a fun, fun thing to do. See, I have found my forever breed. I will always have an Aussie. They're so like little people that um, it's hard to sometimes remember that he's a dog. <laughs> Monica Strauss is an Aussie super fan, and Archer, raised by the Gaffons, is her best pal. I'm one of those people that I've always been an animal lover. And my parents actually owned a pet store when I was growing up. And I just happened to be shopping one day and I stopped at the puppy store and there was this one little dog there. I don't know, he just looked so pitiful and scared and everything like that. I just, I knew I had to take him home. And he was my best friend. We just like instantly bonded and he went everywhere and did everything with me. And then after I lost him, I knew that I had to have another one. Their personalities are just so huge. Archer, he is a mom's boy. He's never left outside without his mom. I don't even think he would stay outside if mom wasn't outside. <laughs> he really needs to be wherever mom is. I have been told that, you know, he kind of like looks for where mom is and waits for mom. He just goes bananas. He's very excited to see me. It's, it's awesome. He's very active. Like I said, we go biking, we go hiking, we kayak. We took a road trip, it was just me and the two dogs, his big brother and Archer, and we stopped at every little tourist attraction. We saw the world's largest prairie chicken. It is now his. He marked it. It's his. <laughs> Last summer, um, he went hiking in Glacier National Park. This is actually his second time. He literally sleeps right here, and we're nose to nose, and he shares my pillow with me. So every morning when my alarm goes off, I get these little smooches on my face to wake up. I show Archer. That's just one of our hobbies that we do. I have a baby book. I've kept every single show since his very first puppy show when he was a baby. We have all his ribbons. I'm a very proud mom. I'm on an Aussie Facebook page. <laughs> 
I have an Aussie t-shirt. Um, it's actually kind of a funny story. When I met my husband, I had asked him if he wanted to go to a, a, a pet expo. And I'm standing in line at this t-shirt maker because I was going to have a picture of Bailey put on a t-shirt. And I knew this guy was for me and I was going to marry him because he did not make fun of me. <laughs> I stood in line. He stood in line the whole time. I got a t-shirt made with my dog's face on it. I put it on. Not once did he snicker at me or anything like that. So I knew he understood. So what antics inspire this level of fanfare for these rowdy pups? Yeah, did you hear what happened to Dad? He was walking down to the garden one day and he saw he heard this loud noise and he was like, what is that? And a mom bear running away. Nobody's getting my house without me knowing it. He goes outside and his nose is to the ground, like who was in my yard? We have like, um, you know, where you can go through the kitchen and the dining room and the living room, so like an open area, and he just, it's like a racetrack. Oh yeah, frog legs. Yep, where he like, his front feet are like this and his back legs are this, you know. <laughs> For sure, they, they, they do kick their legs back and when they lay on their tummy, They'll sit like this all around, and then if I have to get up to get something, then they all have to follow me wherever I go. He goes literally everywhere I go. So if I'm in the living room and I need to go to the kitchen, even if I'm going to be back in two seconds, he goes to the kitchen with me. And, you know, it's you're kind of like the Pied Piper of the Australian Terriers. <laughs> They like being outside in the winter. He loves it. <laughs> he loves it. Like when we first um, open that door, he is like just boom, boom, boom. And then he'll get like stuck in the middle of the yard and they'll be like, Mom, come get me. Yeah, he goes full bore right into the snow. He loves it. <laughs> and then he's like, oh, right, this is really cold. <laughs> the Aussies love to play fetch. So bring the ball back, we, we can play fetch a long time. Yeah. But the thing that I notice about what I think is a little bit more characteristic to the Australian Terriers is that it's like they're so excited to see you and they can hardly control themselves. So they have to find a toy somewhere, put it in their mouth, and then they talk with it in their mouth while they're wiggling their body and greet you. They're fun, they're always entertaining. Oh. They get along great with other dogs. You can take them anywhere. They don't shed, so there's not a lot of that issue. They're, they're a good size. Is it a breed for everyone? I, I don't know, but for us, it's absolutely it's the right breed for us. She won't retrieve it either. She's like, it's mine. She doesn't know what that camera is. <laughs> You're pointing that thing at her and it's like, oh my goodness, what is that? <laughs> my Yorkie is intense, but super, super affectionate. But he he's definitely got a little evil in him. <laughs> or if she sees the grass is a little wet, she will not go out. <laughs> Okay, and that's what silkies do when you're showing them. They immediately shake so they can just show the judge how I never was groomed today at all. Okay. Lily had some problems with it for a while. For a while, her, her shoot command is, Aunt Donnie's holding it open for you. Yeah, anybody asked me to see my kids? Flip, 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 